Michael. Hey, Jay. Oh, yeah, Mike. Yeah. Um, just noticing as you spoke, you were saying on the path to God and your finger went up mm -hmm. as though it's up there somewhere. I'm just interested to know the God that you've mentioned a few times, and mm -hmm. I have no fixed viewpoint on this myself, yep. but I'm just interested to know from your perspective where your God is, what does he look like, what is this path, and is, where do you see him, her, up there, down there, or in here? Um, very good question, Mike. Um, firstly, um, my God and your God are the same gods. Um, when, but we often come at God from very different angles. And as you know from your own past, you've seen very, very much, very different religious experiences in terms of people's viewpoint of God. Um, if we, if we talk about God for a moment in terms of God's attributes and characteristics, um, firstly, God I view as an entity. So let's just draw God as a, an entity that exists just like you are an entity that exists. Secondly, God has masculine and feminine characteristics and qualities. So, so it, I am just as correct calling God my father as I am calling God my mother. Um, for, the, for the reason that God has masculine qualities and God has feminine qualities and there are times in my own life where I'll connect with the feminine part of God, if you like, and there are other times when I'll connect with the masculine part of God. So even masculinity and femininity are what I would call God's, part of God's attributes. Right? And all of you have attributes in a very similar way. There are parts of you that you have, like your personality. And God has personality too. So God, being an entity, has personality. And God existed before I was created. That being the case, God and myself are two separate entities. And God, in fact, created... So if we look at God, the souls that God created, of which you and I are, are one... Um, you are actually a half and I am a half of, of soul. Um, these, this entity, which is our soul, of which I am a half and Mary is my other half, um, this entity also is co created with attributes and characteristics that are very unique. And, uh, and those attributes and characteristics are unique per soul. So each soul is very, very different from any other soul. Now, because we are separate entities, one thing that God gave us was this gift of free will. In other words, I can act upon my own will totally independent to God. That being the case, I can actually do things that God would never conceive of doing. God being where? Uh, well, let's just, we'll leave that one on your balance just for a little bit first. I just want to illustrate the fact that we are actually separate entities to God rather than actually uh, being God ourselves. So a common New Age belief is that I am God, right? whereas uh, my feelings are I am God's son. I am God's daughter if I, I was a woman. So, and God gave us this gift of free will to demonstrate to us that actually we have a life totally independent of God if that's what we want to do. In other words, we can choose to live a life of what I would call self-reliance right and the truth is that the majority of people on the planet live in that place of complete self-reliance very little reliance on God even those that are living in religions as you know often are in complete self-reliance you know they're not trusting God at all in their in their life day to day they might go along Sunday and do a few praises to God uh, which they may or may not co connect to emotionally at the time but the rest of their life they've spent very much doing their own thing, not really thinking about God much at all and all of those kind of things. Many people are in that state. So the truth is that we are a separate entity to God. So one part of your question was, is God within us? Well, God herself or God himself is not within us. We are a completely separate entity to God. However, parts of God can enter us and in particular, God gave us the ability to receive her love. So let's so there is a specific process by which God gave us that ability, but we can actually receive God's love, which is love that belongs to her inside of herself, that we can open up to emotionally and actually have pour into us. 
And the, min the majority of you here have had that experience at some point where you've actually completely opened up to God. Now, oftentimes it's been when you're in the most darkest of situations in your life and you completely open up to God and something changes inside of you because you're so open. This, this divine love actually flows into your soul. And we'll talk more about that in a minute perhaps. So a part of God can enter me, but that still doesn't make me God. It makes me more closer to God. And in fact, I use the term in the first century and now that we can actually become at one with God in this love. In other words, so much of God's love can enter my soul that I now do everything the way God would have done it if God was actually on earth. Does that make sense? It still doesn't make me God. It still makes me God's son. But now I am at one with my creator, at one with my parent, at one with my mother or my father, you could say. And that at one with God allows me now to live my life completely in harmony with all of God's laws and God's love. That's, we have the capacity, every single individual has the capacity to enter that state. But that still doesn't make me God. It's still, I am still God's son. And in fact, I will, for the rest of my existence, be God's son. Um, and there's no way, it's a bit like your daughter, for the rest of her existence, will always be your daughter. It, it can't change. Now, she will grow, she will change, she will have all sorts of different experiences. She'll meet maybe and marry and who knows what else will happen in her life. She'll have children of her own, of which will be her children. But, but at the end of the day, she's always going to be your daughter in the sense that you got together and your seed created her. right? And we could argue that God created her and we'll talk about that as well. But, but um, if you look at the analogy, you can see that actually... She, she's never going to become your father and she's also never going to become you. You will always be two separate individuals in the same way that you are a separate individual from God. Now God existed before all of the things that I've ever seen and I've seen 22 dimensional existences. All of those things that I've seen, I have yet to see God in terms of um, in them. I've seen God's attributes in them. So in other words, I see God's love in them, I see God's wisdom in them, I see God's power in them. I see all of these attributes or qualities of God in all of God's creation. Right? But the qualities don't make uh, are more than the sum of its parts, if you like. So you, I could say you are a heap of atoms, but you are more than just a heap of atoms, aren't you? You are a heap of atoms with free will and a knowledge of your own self. That's pretty amazing for a start. But you also have an arm that can lift something. But you are not your arm. Your arm is an attribute or a, or, or a connection to you. It, is, it operates upon your will. But you are not your arm. Your arm is, 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 is a part of you. It's, it's, a, it's a subset of you. And it's the same with God's attributes and qualities. I can pick one of God's attributes and qualities, like God's love, and I can say that God is love, but love is not God. Do you understand the difference? I'm saying God has the quality of love, but love isn't the only thing God is. Like God is much larger than love itself because God has other attributes other than love, many of which I yet am to discover and most of us are yet to discover. But God has all of these attributes and qualities which make up uh, this being that I can become at one with but never become so I can never become God, but I can certainly become at one with God in the way that I love initially. And who knows in other ways, there might be other ways in which I become at one with God too. But if we can understand it as us being separate entities, it's very powerful. Because then what you start realising is that you can have a longing to open your heart to this entity called God, rather than thinking of God as an energy system. It's very hard to love an energy system. Um, Maybe if I can put it into this kind of uh, analogy. Um, how many of you love the electricity plant down the road? Now, that's a provider of energy to you, isn't it? Like, in the morning, you probably get up and you probably, you know, click the toaster on and chuck your two pieces of bread in there or whatever. You might put on the coffee urn or something like that. And all this energy is coming into your home 
But uh, you might love your toaster, like, but very few of us say to ourselves, oh, isn't it such a beautiful thing, this energy system that's over there producing all this power for me? Be and the reason why is because energy itself is very impersonal, isn't it? We can have uh, energetic relationships with all sorts of things, but it can be very unemotional, every one of those energetic uh, relationships. The truth is with God, if we start seeing God as a personal, as a personal being that we can connect to, you'll start connecting with God on this different level, like a parent, but not the kind of parent we're all used to having, because most of us have grown up with parents who at times have shut us down or at times have opened up, but very, very different for each person, but rather this loving parent who loves us at all times. And once we start seeing God like that, we can start connecting to God in a completely different way. And we can start having a personal relationship with God. It's very difficult to have a personal relationship with an electricity plant, aside from just putting on the power in the morning and turning it off at night. With God, you can have this constant personal relationship as a father to a son, or as a father or a mother to a son, or a father to a daughter, or a mother to a daughter, or a mother to a son. And you can have that personal relationship with God that can remain and grow the rest of your life. But if you don't see God as an entity and you see God just as energy, it's going to be very, very difficult to have that personal relationship with God. And my personal experience has been, over quite a long period of time, has been that actually God is an entity. And the more I think of God as an entity and less as an energy, the closer I get to God. And that in itself is proof that God is an entity. It's interesting when you speak with spirits, um, many of them have the viewpoint that God is an energy. And as a result of that, they have a very disconnected connection with God, many of the spirits who have passed. But as soon as you start speaking to them about God being an entity, and all they have to say is, if you are an entity and you have love to give me, then I would like to receive some of this love. And then they can actually feel love into them and then you ask them, and there's an experiment that I've done quite frequently with many spirits, then you say, well, now, now rub that out, stop feeling that longing that you have for God as an entity. Now let's say, if you're an energy God, can you please give me your love? And ask the spirits what they actually receive then. And I've asked many, many spirits uh, these questions. And on the second case, whenever they've thought of God as an energy, they've never received any love. But as soon as they think of God as an, as an entity, they now receive love, which is in itself proof that God is an entity. Because love can only flow where truth is present. So, so, the beauty, so the way I see God is God is an entity. God is bigger than all of her creation, just like you are bigger than all of your creation. So everything you have ever created... If you look at you know, the, hand, you know, the boat, the car, the caravan, anything that a man can put together, we, one person is greater than the sum total of all those things. And God is very much like that. In fact, we can learn so much about God just by looking at what God's teaching us through creation. And if we look at creation, we can make many assumptions about God that we can then test quite frequently and, and, and without very much error. And as a result, come to some very, very firm viewpoints about what God must be like. And then as we receive divine love from God, those viewpoints will either be confirmed or they'll be discarded. Because any viewpoint that is in harmony with God's truth will be confirmed. And any viewpoint that's in disharmony with God's truth will be, will be denied by God through the absence of love flowing. So that's how God can actually tell you the truth. So the beauty is you can connect to this individual who God is, uh, who has masculine and feminine characteristics, but also has billions of other attributes and qualities of which I can learn about. And I can connect through this connection of love that she is offering me. And I can feel and long for that love. And as I do, and as I open myself up to feeling that love, I can receive more of that love. And as I receive more of that love, the truth becomes well known to me. So instead of me being uncertain as to what God's nature is, I become more and more and more certain as to God's nature. So one thing that I feel quite now is that God is certainly never um, angry. And I know that for certain. Now, years ago, I believed God was an angry God. So 
So years ago I felt that you know, God would punish the wicked and you know, the whole Bible thing of he'd, he'd reward the righteous and punish the wicked. Now I can feel, because of this deeper connection with God, I can feel that no, no, that's not the case at all. In the first century I grew up with this, with this, uh, in this environment where everybody viewed God as a punishing God. They all had to appease God all the time. They all had to make God feel happier. <laughs> And I, realized, and I realized after a short period of time, that after feeling this connection with God, that actually nobody has to make God happier because God's already happy. Right? And, uh, and if God wasn't happy, like you imagine if God wasn't happy, like you're talking about the creator of the universe being unhappy. You know what you're like when you're unhappy. You imagine what God would be like if she was unhappy. Like when you're like, you know, there's tears flowing down your face. You can't, if you really connect with your unhappiness, you can't do much at all. You can't maintain anything around the home very well. You know, you get like, there's a lot of things. You imagine God in that place, like being unhappy like that. It'd be, you know, the whole universe would go to pot within, you know, a few instants. And because the, the universe is very dependent on all of God's happiness. And so, so we start seeing God as having these attributes and qualities that I can connect to. And the closer I get to God, the closer I become to reflecting those qualities and attributes in my own life. And so when I become at one with God, other people think that I'm God, but I'm still not God, I'm God's son. I'm still in this place where I'm allowing all of God's emotions and all of my own emotions, of course. And and I'm in this really connected place, but I'm able to reflect divine love in all of my dealings with everyone around me. And that's what it's like to receive divine love so does that answer a lot of the questions about who god is who we are and and those kind of things now i know you've been on a search for many many years right about god and and you have this deep longing in your heart to connect uh, deeper to god which you can feel quite frequently and i know much of your history has been about feeling that longing and feeling yeah well, you can feel it. I know you can feel it, and I'm just describing your emotions. Um, so, so the key, the key now is just perhaps to experiment with a bit more truth, and just see how that affects this relationship that you've already got established with God, and see whether it grows or not. And um, the key for all spiritual growth is experimentation, really. In the end, um, a lot of times we're so afraid to experiment because of our backgrounds or whatever. I know I was very afraid to experiment because I was always afraid that God would maybe punish me if I experimented in the wrong direction. And the truth is that if you experiment in the wrong direction, you will feel the pain of that at some point. But if you experiment in the right directions, you'll also feel the pleasure of that. And, uh, and the beauty of constantly experimenting is you get closer to God very rapidly if you allow yourself to see yourself in a feedback system constantly. So God is always telling us, this is the beauty of our Creator, is she is always telling us through lots of different means whether we're on the wrong track or we're on the right track. And pain actually in our soul is a great indicator that we're on the wrong track and pleasure that's long-term and deeply felt is an indicator that we're on the right track. So, and it's a beautiful feedback system that we have. Now I'm not talking about short-term pleasure with long-term pain behind it. I'm talking about the deep, peaceful happiness that comes from from things that kind of pleasure tells you you're on the positive direction and that kind of pain where you feel the pain of relationships the pain of uh, acting out of harmony with love yourself that pain is always an indicator that something's wrong that because god it's not god that created pain god just created the potentiality of our, of it in our existence we ourselves through our will create all of our pain 